This is the third part of our discussion on the concept of limit of complex valued functions. So far, we have given a precise mathematical definition of limit of a complex valued function. And then we described a relation between the limits of a complex valued function and limits of multivariable real valued functions. We used this connection to solve some simple examples. So in this discussion, we are going to prove that result. So, so far, we have seen that if complex valued function can be written in this form, u of xy plus iota v of xy, and with these notations, we can state the following result. So, this function has limit u0 plus iota v0 as z approaches to z0 if and only if the limit xy approaches to x0 y0 of u of xy is u0 and the limit xy approaches to x0 y0 of v of xy is v0. Now, what does this if and only if means or if means? So, it it, it is also uh, described as necessary and sufficient condition. So, it means that these two statements, these two mathematical statements are in fact logically equivalent. So, they are necessary and sufficient to each other. So, if this holds, so for example, if this statement holds, if this is true, then we should be able to prove using some simple steps that this statement is also true. And if this statement, the second statement is true, then using some simple steps, we should be able to prove that this first statement is also true. So, they are logically equivalent to each other. And assuming that first statement is true is equivalent to assuming that the second statement is true and vice versa. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, the way we are going to prove this uh, result is based on uh, the definition of this if and only if. So, it means we are going to first assume that this first statement is true. In other words, uh, the complex limit of this complex valued function is u0 plus iota v0. And then we are going to prove these two statements or we are going to prove that these two limits are u0 and v0. Okay. Of course, uh, when we say that uh, this limit exists, then it means that it satisfies the definition of uh, limit of a complex valued function that we have uh, discussed in our earlier discussions. So, let's see uh, what was that precise definition. It means that for every epsilon, epsilon is arbitrary, there exists a delta, delta is a function of epsilon, such that the distance between these functional values is less than epsilon whenever we are in the delta neighborhood in this punctured disk of radius epsilon and center z0. And what do we want to show? We want to show that limit xy approaches to x0, y0 of u of xy is u0 and limit xy approaches to x0, y0 of v of xy is v0. Now, now u of xy and v of xy, so these are real valued functions of two variables and uh, we should be so if we want to prove this thing then we should be using the definition that we described in our earlier discussions about the limits of real valued functions okay so this was the definition so if this limit is equal to u naught it means for every epsilon greater than zero there should exist a delta such that the distance between the functional values and u0 is less than epsilon whenever the distance between xy and x0, y0 is less than delta. So, these are our basic definitions. Okay? So, in other words, whenever I am saying that this limit exists, it means that it satisfies the definition which we described earlier. And similarly, if we want to prove this thing, we should be, so we should be proving that this limit satisfies this condition. Okay, so uh, let's start with our proof. So it is given that this limit is equal to u naught plus v naught. So this implies for so this is our given statement. Okay, so this is the fact, and uh, we can use this fact in our proof. Okay, so what is given for epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that 
Okay, so the distance between f of z. So I'm going to use its expanded notation. So in other words, u of x y plus iota v of x y minus this limit u naught plus iota v naught is less than epsilon whenever the distance between this is uh, z naught. So let's say this is z naught. So z minus z naught is less than delta and of course greater than zero. Okay. So this is the given statement. This is true. For every epsilon, we can find a delta. Okay. So, so we can use this uh, statement. Okay. So now we can uh, write it down in the following way. So logically equivalent to the following statement. So I'm going to ignore this x, y just to simplify uh, the steps. So u minus u naught plus outer v minus v naught less than epsilon whenever this uh, uh, x minus x naught plus outer y minus y naught is less than delta. So this is given. We are allowed to use this thing. Now, let's see what do we want to prove. Okay, so we want to prove that this limit x y approaches to x naught y naught of u of x y is equal is equal to u naught. Okay, so that means that for epsilon greater than zero. So now this is the statement that we want to prove. Okay, so we want to show this thing for epsilon greater than zero. We want to find this delta greater than zero such that the distance between, so once again I am ignoring this x and y variables, so u minus u naught is less than epsilon whenever the distance between this uh, x, y, okay, so the distance between x plus iota y and x naught plus iota y naught is less than delta and of course greater than zero. So that is the statement that we want to show. Now, uh, what, what are we allowed to use? We are allowed to use only this part. These are the facts. And what do we want to prove? So we want to prove these things. So for epsilon greater than zero, we should be able to find this delta. Now let's see uh, how do we prove this thing. So using the observation that u minus uh, u naught is less than or equal to u minus u naught plus iota v minus v naught. Okay. So and similarly, similarly, v minus v naught is less than or equal to u minus u naught plus iota v minus v naught. So using this observation, we can easily prove our statement. Okay. So uh, since, let's start from the first step. So u minus u naught, we want to prove that this is less than epsilon. So this is less than or equal to, so this statement, so this statement is in fact f of z minus z naught. Okay. So, so in other words, this becomes f of z minus z naught. So this is less than epsilon whenever whenever z minus z naught is less than delta and of course greater than zero. So uh, basically we, we are using uh, the definition of the limit of this complex valued function since the limit of f of z is z naught. So that's why this is less than epsilon whenever this distance is less than delta and this implies that the distance between u naught and u is less than epsilon. So this implies u minus u naught is less than epsilon whenever uh, the distance between z and z naught is less than delta. Okay. So uh, similarly, we can prove that Similarly, we can prove this thing for 
V and V naught. So V minus V naught is less than epsilon whenever the distance between Z and Z naught is less than delta. Okay. So there is a there is a simple point over here that uh, uh, of course if we want to prove that the limit of U is U naught then uh, we we start from here we choose our epsilon in this case and then we go uh, to the definition of the limit of uh, complex valued function that okay the limit of f of z is z naught so that's why for this epsilon there should exist a delta so uh, more precisely we are uh, going in the opposite way okay so if we want to prove that the limit of u is u naught then we choose epsilon over here and we need to find delta and for this particular epsilon we find uh, delta corresponding to the limit of f of z is z naught and then we use that delta over here okay. now uh, now let's assume the second part and we want to prove this first part okay so so far we have assumed that this part is true if this part is true then this part is also true now we want to prove the converse of this thing that if these two limits exist and are equal to u naught v naught then the limit of this complex valued function is u naught plus v naught okay so uh, let's see if these are the limits then what does it mean so what is given so given is for epsilon greater than zero there exist delta greater than zero such that Okay. So, the distance between u and u naught, so once again I am ignoring this x and y variable just to simplify the writing, is less than epsilon whenever the distance between z and z naught is less than delta. Now, this z is x, y and this z naught is x naught, y naught or if you want to use the other notations then the distance between ordered pair x, y and ordered pair x naught, y naught is less than delta. Okay, so if you want to use the other notation, so this is the same as x minus x naught square plus y minus y naught square. Okay, and it is the same as this thing. Okay, and similarly, for the same epsilon, we should be able to find another uh, delta okay so z minus z naught is less than delta so let's call it delta 1 and let's call it delta 2 because these are two different functions so these deltas should be in principle different uh, in both cases okay so this is a given fact so we are allowed to use these facts so whenever we want in this part of the proof now, what do we uh, want to prove? So, we want to prove that uh, the limit of f of z as z approaches to z naught is this uh, complex number. Now, to simplify the proof, which we shall see how it will simplify, we should, uh, we should assume uh, this to be epsilon by 2 instead of epsilon. Okay, so, let's take them to be epsilon by 2. We will see how it will simplify uh, the proof in our next step. Now, given these statements, now we want to prove the following thing. To prove that f of z minus z naught is less than epsilon whenever z minus z naught is less than delta greater than zero. Okay, so to prove for epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta. In other words, we need to find delta. Okay, so we need to find delta which is of course uh, a function of epsilon in other words it depends on the epsilon now we can simplify this notation in the following form so u minus u naught plus iota v minus v naught less than epsilon whenever this distance z minus z naught is less than epsilon uh, delta now we want to find this delta find now if we take okay so take delta to be minimum of the two values of delta 1 and delta 2 
then this delta will work. Now let's see how it will work. Okay, so now this u minus u naught plus iota v minus v naught. So we want to prove that this should be less than epsilon. So this is uh, less than or equal to u minus u naught plus v minus v naught and of course uh, mod of iota which is equal to 1 so this is equal to u minus u naught plus v minus v naught now this u minus u naught is less than epsilon by 2 and this v minus v naught is also less than epsilon by 2 so this becomes epsilon so this distance is less than epsilon but under what conditions so the first statement holds so this first statement holds when the distance between z minus z naught is less than delta 1 and the second statement holds if the distance between z minus z naught is less than delta 2 okay greater than 0 greater than 0 so if we want to use both these facts that this is less than epsilon by 2 and this is less than epsilon by 2 then we should assume that the distance between z and z naught is less than the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2 so in fact we take our delta to be the minimum of delta and delta 1 and delta 2 so in other words we can say that for this epsilon we have found a delta which is in fact this delta and corresponding to this delta the distance between f of z and z naught is less than epsilon so in this discussion we presented a proof of the relation between the limits of complex valued functions and the limits of real valued functions this connection is very useful for calculating the limits of complex valued functions in our further discussion we are going to use this connection and of course we are going to present some further results about the limits of real valued functions and of course using this connection we are going to see how uh, it will simplify the calculation of the limits of complex valued functions.